Hello, good afternoon. My name is Antonio Paluca. I'm the 3M UK Technical Specialist for Adhesives. So today's webinar, how do I select the correct adhesive? Fairly large and complex subject. But this webinar will take you through the key factors to consider to help you select the correct adhesive for your application. Obtaining good adhesion is the key platform to start from. So an understanding of adhesion, an appreciation of the influence of product and joint design and the adhesive mechanical properties, and also an understanding of the loads the product will be subjected to in service will be covered. Once we have achieved good initial adhesion, we will then discuss achieving good long-term performance. So considering environmental factors and other degrading, degrading agents. We'll also be looking at some of the application properties of adhesives that influence assembly and manufacture, which are often overlooked, but these are very important aspects. Before we get into that, I just want to quickly go over some of the key advantages of using adhesives. Uniform stress distribution um, compared to mechanical techniques help eliminate stress concentration at specific mounting points. Obviously no damage to substrates, so we eliminate holes and maintain protective coatings. It also allows the use of thinner gauge metal substrates compared to the techniques such as welding. It can often be reduced labor costs and also these have gap filling properties. These can be very important for substrates which are not the same, such as dissimilar materials and also the modern trend of composite bonding. These is bond and seal simultaneously. It can help reduce galvanic corrosion. This is very important in the automotive and electronic industries. Bonding dissimilar materials is becoming increasingly important to reduce weight and improve added value and, and aspects to new designs. It enables new designs to be, to be thought of and, and put into production, whereas they were previously not possible. You can also allow expansion and contraction in the design. This again is especially useful for bonding with similar materials or for longer parts. So, adhesive selection considerations. Today's webinar will go through how adhesives provide required adhesion, strength and other performance requirements for the application in mind. Durability surviving the expected environmental conditions for the design life of the application. And what are these application characteristics will help optimize the manufacturing process for the product or application. Adhesives as we know them today have been successfully used in many different and difficult applications over the last 50 years. <clears throat> So we have a strong historical record of success to guide us. There is a synergistic relationship that one needs to balance effectively in the, in the ease of selection process. Performance consideration, substrate service energy, service preparation that impacts adhesion, factors that influence the loads, the type of force and stress, bond area, modulus. These have to be balanced with durability considerations, such as the weather, thermal cycling, temperature extremes, the type of loading, is it static or dynamic? And also, and also the actual application of the adhesive, its physical form, how it cures, how it dispenses. 
So the platform for this is adhesive performance. The initial performance characteristics of an adhesive joint is done by the adhesion and the cohesive strength. Adhesion is affected by the substrate characteristics, surface energy, surface preparation, and the adhesive type, chemistry, curing system, etc. Adhesion is defined as the ability to wet up substrates. And is affected by the surface energy above the substrate and the adhesive, certainly the adhesive chemistry. Cohesion is the internal strength of the material and is affected by the adhesive type, the cross link density, modulus and strength of the adhesive. If the adhesion force is always greater than the cohesive force in a bonded joint, then one can design to the cohesive strength of the adhesive. This is an important design parameter, especially for structural joints. Cohesive failure is usually more controlled and more desirable, and as I've just stated, can be designed for. So we design for no failure, but in extreme conditions, overloading for example, if you do achieve cohesive failure, it's more predictable, and it's actually, as I said, defined by the strength of the adhesive. Substrates can also fail as well <clears throat> in certain scenarios. This is a much more controlled scenario. <clears throat> so it's fundamental to get good adhesion because that's the platform from which you can actually design using conventional methodology. It's fundamental to get a good adhesion Service interactions between the adhesive and the substrate create adhesion. The same forces that hold materials together also impart adhesion and help create adhesive forces. And intermolecular forces are key to understanding this. To, for these to be effective, intimate contact between the adhesive and the substrate are required. This is the classic energy distance plot for intermolecular forces. So it's, a, it's a energy versus um, distance in Armstrong's. This clearly shows that for effective forces, for, for intermolecular forces to be effective, you are at the one, one to five Armstrong range, which is essentially a micron divided by 10,000. So micron is already very small, so it's 10 thousandths of a micron. This, this is fundamental. And in the macro world, the world that we live in, the pioneering work done by Bill Wake and Keith Allen, etc., et al., indeed, using a thermodynamic approach, provided a practical way of assessing these intermolecular interactions by looking at surface energy. So wet out the ability of liquid adhesive to make contact with a solid substrate resulting from intermolecular interactions when the two are brought together. And surface energy is a measure of how much a solid substrate wants a liquid adhesive to wet out its surface. The higher the surface energy of a substrate, the easier it is to wet out. The more intimate contact, and therefore the better probability of achieving effective intermolecular attraction. Substrate surfaces can be defined by their surface energy. Those below 38 dimes per centimeter are traditionally difficult to bond to. Surface energy is a conf complex phenomenon. So Surface energy can also be divided into polar and non-polar components, but for the purpose of today's talk, we'll, we'll keep it at kind of the top level. So surface energy helps us understand intermolecular attraction. So, despite their clean appearances, substrates sometimes may not be ready for liquid easy bonding. Liquid adhesives greatly benefit from clean textured surfaces. 
which obviously increased effective bond area, um, remove service imperfection, and provide areas of mechanical interlocking. Okay, just to test if you're all awake, we're going to have a quick poll. So, to the audience, how much improvement to the simple single lap shear strength of an epoxy adhesive can be made by simply abrading the steel substrate surface? If you can click on your um, screen to select an answer, that would be greatly appreciated. Let's see what people get. The answers are flooding in. Wow, over 90% of you have voted. This is excellent. Okay, Spencer, do we have a result? Okay, so um, I think you can see that on your screen. Um, minus 25% of, so a, a reduction in, in bond strength, 2% of you voted for that. 12% went for a 20% increase. 46% went for a 75% increase and 39% went for the 100% increase. So a reasonable spread of answers there, but a surprisingly good number of you got it right. The, by just simply abrading a metal surface, steel surface, cleaning it, you can double the strength of the adhesive, 100% increase in shear strength. So, service preparation is a key factor in obtaining good adhesion and in obtaining good performance indeed in adhesive joints. Service treatment is surface specific and also relates to the harshness of the environment of the application. Products that are used in harsh environments with demanding loads in safety critical applications will almost certainly require more vigorous service preparation compared to, say, an indoor application with little load. Indeed, the aerospace industry spends millions of pounds each year anodizing and etching metal surfaces to ensure the highest level of joint performance. And indeed, most planes these days are actually bonded. Strength comes from adhesive bonded, which some people don't know. So surface pretreatment is, is indeed specific to the surface. Glass is an interesting material. Uh, often you can get good initial bonds to glass, which deteriorate with time. And the use of a primer on glass, specifically a saline type adhesion promoter, is often recommended. For more structural applications, um, again, it's always dangerous to generalize because it does, it, you know, adhesive bonding is very, you know, sort of application dependent. But in general, the use of primers does not increase long-term performance of adhesive joints. It helps you gain initial adhesion. So it's the importance of the initial service preparation to get that right. So we've considered adhesion, and now we can assess it and the key factors. We're now going to move on application. So application loads and the properties of adhesives, mechanical properties. So if you consider your services and obtaining good adhesion, it's time to consider the mechanical aspects of joint performance. Stress strain curves define the strength of the adhesive and also the modulus of an adhesive. Knowing the modulus of an adhesive, how a material reacts in strain to a load applied, and knowledge of the loads that are likely to be seen in the application are the starting point for joint design and also help you select the correct adhesive. So modulus is a measure of the stiffness of an elastic material, ratio of stress strain and elastic area. We have a wide range of adhesives. So for the joint design and your products you're considering, bonding, the loads being applied both in terms of size and the type, and we'll talk a little bit about this in the next few slides, ideally needs to be matched in easy modulus. This is especially relevant for plastic and composite bonding. 
um, where some energy absorption may be required. So we take a look at these two three other diesels. PP760 on the right. Hatch has a, has a failure strain of around 2%. It's a 2% strain. The joint fails, but it's very high strength, well over 40 megapascal. On the left, we have a um, PP620, which is an excellent P, two-part PU adhesive. has a very, very different stress strain characteristics. It actually fails above 100% elongation. So if you have areas where you need large flexibility, uh, some flexibility in joint design, or you need to absorb a lot of energy, because the area under the curve is indeed uh, energy absorbed. Um, this is an excellent product. The strength is not as high, but 20 megapascals is still quite strong. Of course, toughness equals the equals the area under the stress strain curve. So indeed, the DP620 adhesive system absorbs energy and will be a good choice with some flexibility in the joint, in the joints, sorry, as needed, or indeed in impact situations. So this is often used for composite bonding of CD composite joints. So this type of data is fundamental in structural joint design. It's understanding of the energy characteristics of your application, the loading, and matching that to the adhesive modulus. Speaking of loads, this data leads us to consider joint design and indeed loads. Joints should preferably be designed for shear, tension, and compression, not peel or cleavage. Tensile is a pulling stretch, <coughs> excuse me, acts perpendicular <coughs> to the bond plane. Shear is a sliding stress which acts parallel to the bonding plane. Both tensile and shear forces, the entire bond area contributes to strength. So this is good joint design, this is what you want. We both give cleavage, it's a prime stress between two substrates, two rigid substrates. And for peel, it's a prime stress with at least one flexible substrate. The key thing here is that with both cleavage and peel, the stress is a concentrated set leaning edge. So this is poor design. This is a cool stress optic. This shows the stress concentration on a sim single lap shear joint. And as you can see, all stresses are concentrated at the edges. So avoiding peel and avoiding cleavage is really good design for adhesive bonding. Okay, so structural adhesives in particular are much stronger in shear than peel. However, we looked at the stress strain curves of DP620, which showed an adhesive that will be quite good in peel because it absorbs a lot of energy and has a high strain before it fails. Um, but in general, it is good to design to minimize peel and maximize shear loads. Many joints fail in peel even when they appear to be in shear mode. This is especially true with flexible substrates of thin gauge metals, for example. So, ideally joints should be designed with an easy bonding in mind. However, joints can also be redesigned, often with minimum impact on form, fit form and function. So three examples are shown here. The original design you know, with the red arrows was poor design because they emphasized either pale cleavage or a combination of the two. But they could effectively be redesigned with some very simple changes where we actually change the, the, the forces into the more acceptable tensile compression and shear. Indeed, the bottom right hand, right hand example, which you might point to is pointing to, with a clever redesign, a very simple redesign, is actually now using this, the strength of the substrate as part of the joint, which is kind of, the kind of tricks that you should look for when you're designing your product. And you know, this slide shows that if you get it right, if you get your um, service preparation right, 
you match the right of the easy to the substrates, you can see that your loads, you can actually get a very good performance fast with easy. This is well known, I think, in the industry. Um, hopefully, it's a message we're trying to get across as well with this type of webinar. But if you get the basics right, consider your, your adhesion and your and your loads, you can actually get better performance than any mechanical uh, fixing. Okay, so that's initial performance, getting your adhesion correct, understanding your loads. What about durability? I hear you asking mentally behind the screen. So adhesive can be very strong <clears throat> with effective service preparation and correct adhesive choice for the application environment. They can also be durable. This is by understanding the simple fact, just as with mechanical joints, certain factors reduce the bond strength of adhesive joints. Now, this is taken into consideration and designed for in the beginning, you can have a perfectly acceptable long-term performance that will last as long as any mechanical joint. So exposure to humidity and certain liquids over a long time will cause reduction in bond strength. This is due to the absorption of molecules into the adhesive and a subsequent drop in modulus. Certain, certain liquids are more dangerous than others. So typical so engine, engine oils, fuels are typical things to be concerned about. So by, the, by understanding this performance, you can design for it in the beginning. So this is an exposure study. The slide shows the effects of 1,000 hours continuous immersion of different fluids on the bond strength of single like shear joints. Two substrates, aluminium and PVC, so at the bottom there, aluminium and PVC. This is shear strength on the uh, y-axis. As you can see, different um, sort of degrading factors, different solvents have different effects. They also have different effects depending on the substrate. So, for example, water has very little effect on PVC, whereas on steel, or aluminium, sorry, uh, the water has much more pronounced effects reducing the bond strength by you know, over 30%. But well, is this kind of data and this understanding will help you design a joint that will last because you know you can compensate for this kind of drop in performance with time. Temperature, the environment, the effects of temperature. Temperature will have an effect on polymers, which most of these are made from, and substrates. Substrates are effect, you know, it affects the thermal expansion of substrates. This is a great area for adhesives because they, if you select the right adhesives, you can compensate thermal expansion of substrates. The adhesives themselves are affected by the, the glass transition temperature. <clears throat> the glass transition temperature, Tg, is the temperature at which segmental motion of polymer chains will begin and defines the points at which most polymers go from a hard state to a soft state. This transition point has a large effect on the mechanical properties such as modulus of the material, as can be seen from this plot. For higher temperatures, especially joints under load, creep is an important consideration and this will become likely as you approach the adhesive TG. Again, this can be compensated for by the design of the joint and adhesive selection. A lower temperature ex exposure, avoiding bristle behavior under loads is an important consideration. Cyclic loading, fatigue. Fatigue is the progressive structural damage that occurs to a material under repeated or cyclic loading. If the stresses on the cured structural adhesive are above a certain threshold value, microscopic cracks can begin to form. And these can lead to a crit 
these can reach a critical size and sudden failure will occur, fracture will occur. Failure can occur under cyclic or repeated loading conditions and much lower forces than a single dynamic test. So we take this plot for example, this is 7240, frame adhesive. When you first test it, you approach 27 megapascals on a single lot shear test. <clears throat> After 10 million cycles, when you test the joint destruction, the strength of the knees is reduced to 8, 8 megapascals. However, no failure on the circle samples below 6 megapascals was observed. So this is, again, great design data. It starts off with a very high strength, but even after a lot of cyclic loading, you still have a reasonable amount of strength left, and if you just, again, choose the right adhesive, and factor this in, you can have an effectively durable joint over a long period of time. Okay, we've talked about adhesion, we've talked about loads, We've talked about factoring in for environmental factors or cyclic loading. But these just come in several different physical forms. This is in part to help accommodate different application requirements. One part of these is easy to apply, no metering or mixing. Um, however, they will need an external curing factor, whether it's UV or temperature or moisture. Two-part liquids require no additional input to achieve a complete cure, but they will need uh, dispensing equipment or metering or the use of an EPX gun. Pace can often be better than on sag, but require greater effort to mix and apply. So you can choose the, the form of adhesive to suit your application. This is an interesting slide. This shows the effects of adhesive viscosity or adhesive flow. There is a balance to be had between getting good flow and wetting and also having practical physical characteristics to make the adhesives easy to apply for the real world. This slide shows the effects of viscosity non-sagging gap filling properties which are kind of interrelated. Viscosity versus shear rate, the viscosity governs the ease of flow of an adhesive and with most of these the viscosity is shear rate dependent. So on low shear to high shear the viscosity will change. When we apply a shear rate during dispensing the viscosity will fall markedly and good flow will be observed. So as you can see here, with low shear rate, high viscosity. The, the ideal behavior of course is, uh, is demonstrated by 7260. So I've got a slide here on the top. So this is um, after applying the adhesive, 10 minutes later, there was no sag. So when you apply shear rate, you want good flow characteristics. When you remove the shear rate, this non sag characteristics, this behavior is fixotropic. And this can be very, very important if you're applying adhesives on vertical surfaces or in certain applications. On the left, these ice cream cones, as I call them. This is DP620. This is that lovely energy absorbing two-part PU. This has a fast, gelling, fast gap filling capability. Uh, so if you need to fill large gaps, you know, consider the gap filling capability of the adhesive. And all these kind of th things are interrelated to some degree. <coughs> Excuse me. Adhesive cure. This is very important to understand the work life of the adhesive, the amount of time needed to mix and apply the, apply the adhesive to get the parts fixed together. For certain applications, for example, large panel bonding, you will need a long work life because you physically need to a lot of time to apply the adhesive to large panels. Set time is the fixture time times handling strength. 
time needed for the parts to be clamped together to be for them to be set before they can be handled. Full cure, time required for easy to reach full strength and its final properties. This is an understanding of this is very, very important. So if you have you know high production rates or you have large panels, the kind of balancing of these properties is very important. Uh, this is a plot of bond line versus single lot shear strength. It's often assumed that more adhesive is a good thing in a joint. And this is true to a point. This plot show actually shows a, a decrease in shear strength as the bond line increases for structural adhesive. If it was a peel test, it would show the opposite trend, where the, the strength would increase with increasing bond line. So understanding you know, the force in your joint and you these, the type of adhesive you have is very important to understanding how much you should apply. Typically for structural adhesives, around 0.3 of a millimeter uh, is a good, good, good number to aim for if it, the joint is in shear or tension. If it's in peel, you want to go higher, maybe up to a millimeter. Now, obviously there are many different adhesive types which will be impossible to go through in detail today. But so now I'm going to go quickly go through the features and benefits of the main and easy types used in structural bonding application. So epoxies are generally the adhesive of choice in the most highly loaded applications, and they're typically the strongest adhesives that are available. Perform well in difficult environments. They're available in a variety of moduli and also a variety of speed of cure, etc. Toughened and flexible versions are available, as are oil tolerant grades. These are available in one and two parts, 1K and 2K. Polyurethanes, and we showed an example earlier of DP620 with its lovely energy absorbing characteristics. They're typically used in less highly loaded structures, but you can't get 30 megapascal strength from a PU. Well, but use where you need more flexibility. We need high strength, but low stiffness, so bonding to plastics. Or where you have impact scenarios, where you need to absorb energy. Again, available as 1K moisture cure, or two-part chemical cure. Acrylics bond well to many substrates, especially plastics. We need to have special grades for low surface energies. Normally very fast curing, often oil resistant, and they're generally two, chem two part chemical cure systems. I'm going to do a slightly unashamed plug here for the two 3M products. We have two very special products, I think they're special products, um, DP8010 and DP8005. These are what are known as low surface energy bonders, a special type of acrylic formulation, which will bond to low surface energy, low surface, surface energy plastics, excuse me, such as poly, polypropylene, poly, polyolefins in general, such as PE. Work life three to ten minutes. How many strength? It can be as quick as 45 minutes, depending on the substrates and the environment, temperature. But these are excellent, excellent products for bonding plastics. You know, as I said earlier, there are very many different types of adhesives. And here is a bonding continuum, which plots different adhesive types uh, via strength, position via strength. This is just one way of doing this. And one can also plot a bonding continuum using other properties such as cure speed or gap filling. But 3M produce adhesives for all of these types and more. So we should be able to help and offer help in most applications and most issues that you may have. So why bonds fail? But well, well, if you get it wrong, it's probably due to something on this slide. See inadequate adhesion, 
you need to consider the environmental aspects, you didn't apply the adhesive correctly, you didn't understand the joint design and the application loads, or we didn't do enough service preparation. It's normally on this slide, if something's gone wrong, it'll be on this slide 99.9% .9 of the time. So that's something for you guys to consider. So to try and summarize, I've got Spencer looking at me telling me I've got, only got a few minutes left. So to try and then summarize, at 3M, we always advise customers that it is good practice to assess the suitability of every adhesive type for, or every adhesive product for a specific application. Defining or blueprinting the products and application is the key starting point. So the things that we have talked about today, initial performance, understanding the adhesion, balancing that with against long-term durability and the loads, are all part of that understanding. So, in summary, today we've gone through the key factors to consider in order to achieve good initial performance, good long-term durability, and some key factors to consider when you're actually making up your joints or your products. The overall suitability of an adhesive is a balanced equation, where one has considered adhesion, loads and match that to the mechanical properties of the adhesive and one has taken away or considered the environmental factors whether it be cyclic loading, temperature extremes. If you balance that equation you will definitely achieve a great result with adhesives. <coughs> 